Y'all ready for another hour? We'll do one more hour. Give a second for people to get on. It is 10.15 here in New York. <clears throat> Give a little bit of time for folks to join in. So if you were watching the last hour we did, uh, it ended pretty much right at a perfect spot where the lady was going to transition into something else. And so I wanted to make sure we finished the, the it was a doctor who kind of finished the closing thought and was really good in how to properly apply a mask and the, the gloves and then how to take off the gloves and the mask. So that was, that was really good. Thank you, Myra. Uh, so, okay, so we're back on. We'll do an hour from 10.15 to 11.15, and that will make four hours that I've done today. So it's been a heck of a day. Uh, let's see. Firing it up. Here we go. We just got the hold on finger. Hello. Can you hear me? Hold on. Mom, I got David. <laughs> I got David on live. Look, I have David. Oh. <laughs> 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 this is my mom and this is my dad. Hi, mom and dad. Hi. Can you hear Hi, him? I can hear him through here. Well, I can't because he can't hear me like oh, that. Oh, okay. okay. Here, do you want to talk to him? Sure. You have more to say about Puerto Rico. Hey, David. Hi there. Hi there. Hi. Um. So. So tell me, tell me your name and tell me where you are in Puerto Rico. <laughs> okay, we're not in Puerto Rico. My name's Janira. Um, we're originally from Puerto Rico. We live in Opelika, Alabama. Opelika, Alabama. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Which is Lee County, Alabama, where the tornadoes happened last year. Absolutely. Now, you know, yes. you know what I love is that you have a little bit of an Alabama drawl. <laughs> yes. I love it. I've lived here since I was 10 years old. Oh yeah, you 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 as Alabama as you are Puerto Rican. You might be a little bit more Alabama. Uh, yes, me, sir. You know, we've been talking about new normal. So tell uh -huh. me what your new normal is right now. Well, we have two kids. Okay. Um, one's a seventeen-year-old, which is the one you were talking to, um, who's a junior in high school, and we have an eleven-year-old who turns twelve next Thursday, so okay. who will not have a birthday party. Yeah. Um. He's okay with that. Okay. Um, I'm a hospice nurse. Okay. I work um, for a national company at their ho home office, but I work locally. So I do have the access to work from home, okay. which is what I'll be doing for the next three weeks at least that school is out. Um, granted that they don't need, actually need me to provide patient care, which I'm more than willing to do if it comes to that. Sure. But we're just kind of in the house doing different activities. The kids um, are doing puzzles, and they wash cars today. And um, uh, the 17-year-old, my daughter, she has started her own little personalized bracelet business. So she's taking Good. orders, but she's making sure she tells everybody they can't get them until <laughs> the quarantine is over. <laughs> right, right. So, now um, tell me, with your, with your job as a hospice nurse, what would you be able to do remotely? Well, because I work at a corporate level. Okay. Um, I work with medical reviews and um, I see. compliance. I'm able to still do my chart reviews from home and such, but the nurses who are still in the field, the instructions that they have given them is they cannot come to the office because they want the smaller amount of any possibility of infecting anybody. They are indeed infected. So they're out seeing their patients. 
yep. in the best way that they can, and it it is what it is. I hear you. I hear you. Well, I'm sure glad we got to we got to hear from you guys. This is good. Yes, Alabama. And, uh, Alabama, and we became a fan of yours um, as a family when Maria occurred. Yes. Um, we, I went to nursing school in Puerto Rico, even yep. though I grew up here in Alabama. Yeah. Um, and so you were the only way that we had to know what was going on there. And so ever since then, we just rely on you for everything. Um, my kids became huge fans during the Rosa Joe. Um, protest. They um, followed you and um, celebrated once you gave the big news that he had resigned in our living room. So um, they know who you are. Can you run for governor? <laughs> oh yeah, they want you to run for governor. And um, it, it's not true and it hasn't happened unless I said David said. <laughs> <laughs> And once I said David said, then it's like, oh, it's really bad. David it's said it. It's true. <laughs> well, listen, um, my my very best to all of you. I'm glad I was able to chat with y'all tonight and uh, give my best to everybody in the family, including your daughter. Yes. Bye, She's, love. She has a little bit of anxiety because she is due to graduate early in December as a young senior. But all of the tests that she had to benchmark, which are the ACT, the work keys and such, have been canceled. So she has a little bit of anxiety, but I think it'll all work out. <laughs> well, that's what I'm hoping for you guys. Uh, good luck and nice chatting with you. Thank, Thank you. you okay. Thank you for everything. You bet. Good night, y'all. Good night. Okay, so let's be clear. Are y'all having trouble hearing me? Because a couple of people are saying you're very faint. Like I'm talking in my normal voice. Are y'all not hearing me well? Hearing me, hearing me, hearing me, yes, no. I saw several messages from folks who said, very faint, no, I can hear you. So you do hear me. Say, yes, I can hear you, or it's good. And it is good or not good. <laughs> I just want to make sure it's okay. I hear you well. Okay. All right, I hear you. Okay, fine. Okay, so we're good. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Here we go. <clears throat> that was a sweet little family from Alabama, wasn't it? I love surprising people. It's so much fun. Oh, well, what happened to the lady? I pressed the button. It didn't go through. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, loud clapping. <laughs> I guess the audio is working just fine then. Waiting, 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 waiting. Hello. Hey, David. How you doing? I'm good, Carlos. How are you? I'm doing good. Where are you in the world? I'm in Durham, North Carolina. Okay. Tell me what your new normal is like. Well, I've been on and off um, working as a... Uh, security officer and Duke University. Okay. Uh, we still performing our job normally in the area. We still have, I don't want to say like a lot of students, but he's, there's, uh, there's a student. He's still there. A um, couple of them, a bunch of them, they, they, they saying that they want to stay in the room, in the dorms because I work in the place that the dorms are, um, the place they live. And a lot of people they want to stay in that area. Yeah. So, um, so far I've been here. They earlier um, today in the morning they I hear on the news saying that there are like 15 students that got positive on the virus, and now during around like six o'clock, if I'm not mistaken, six thirty, I heard there was another another 11 people. Mm. So are you probably 25? What has changed about the way you patrol on campus? Uh, to be honest to you, um, it was normal until last week because um, this is going to be my, my days off. I will be back on Friday, and I've been receiving emails 
from my boss telling me instructions and as soon as I get to the office, uh, they're going to get me more instructions what to do and everything. Uh, now they want, they, one of the things that I, that they tell me is like normally they transfer us to the position that we're going to be working. You know, the, we got two cars for the security, but now I think they, they trying to like let us drive our cars to the positions that we are going to be working with because we got places that we can park our cars. Right. So, so we don't have like five people in one car. So Good. that's why they to avoid that. Good. Uh, that's the kind of smart stuff we're talking about. Good. Exactly. So, and one of my concern is like, you know, I work as a security, of course I have to do my job. And the thing is, um, I'm here living with, um, with my wife and my two kids. And also I got a, like, a small pup, a small dog, a month, walking around. I have to talk, looking for him. Uh, but I, I got a, in a four bedroom apartment. But one of the the bedroom is like a small studio. Yeah. And it's, and it's besides on my house. It's to, it's connected. So my parents live in there because my mom suffered for um Alzheimer and she's already in bed. It's been a long couple of years. Um, that she's already in there, and I'm um, I'm the one who's lift her, uh, lift her from bed until my dad and my wife clean the bed and you know and helping change her everything, and that's my concern very well because uh, you know she's in that condition she cannot take a, and any medications, so and I've been to be honest to you struggling depressions and everything all this time because what I'm gonna do if I get it. And what they're gonna do? So it's been tough. Oh, Carlos! Wow, my heart, my heart breaks for you. So listen, you got a good job at the university. You are well within your rights to tell them what you do not feel comfortable doing. I will. <laughs> very clear about that. So please be comfortable. You have a dependent at home. You have a family who relies on you. You do not want to bring that in the house to infect someone else. So the degree to which you are able to stay at least six feet away from everybody you can, even when you're on duty, please try to. And you know what? Remember, when you come home, you can take your clothes off out the, at the door. You can take, you know, like do what you can to desanitize yourself or to sanitize yourself. Uh, decontaminate. That's the word I'm looking for. Decontaminate yourself at the door, right? So take okay. all that off and walk into the house with different clothes. Make sure you wash because we want to protect your mama and your family. Uh, yeah. and your family. Oh, yes, yes. Right. yes. So, yeah, because we, we normally, we, we're from, um, um, we're from Puerto Rico. So everybody's from Puerto Rico uh, uh, from, well, different places. Because I'm, I'm from Aguadilla. Aguadilla. Uh, Aguadilla. I was, I was five minutes away from the crash boat. <laughs> That was I was walking to my house to the crash bowl and then returning back like the any time that I want, but I'm like, hey. <laughs> so um uh, my wife my wife is from San Juan and my dad well is he born Manatee, uh Manatee uh, Puerto Rico. Yeah. But he raised he raised in New York in, in the place on Manhattan. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, well, I'm glad we got you I'm glad we got you on. It was good to hear your story. Stay positive as best you can, and I wish you all my best. All right, I appreciate it. You're welcome. Right. Good night, Carlos. All right. Nice man. Nice man. Boy, what a story with his mama having to take care of her. I mean, them relying on him consistently. Whew. I'm just looking at Paddington. Hi, you surprised me again. Hello. Oh, we talked last night. We talked two nights ago. Two nights ago. You have an update? Not update. I'm at home with this little guy. He's Hello. my special needs 13-year-old. Hi. What's your name? Caleb. Hi, Caleb. I'm David. Nice to meet you. Hi. He's a journalist. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. yeah, say bye, nice to meet you. Bye. Go and watch a movie, buddy. Bye. <laughs> so just in the last two days we talked, anything new? No, I just went for in I went for a meeting in the hospital. And again, they authorized us um, 
to go just for oh my husband wants to say hi 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 there i super fun for you well thank you thank you yeah. very much so the author asked us to go um to like big emergencies like strokes and heart attacks and traumas but without using a mask at all because they want to save those for you know the doctors and nurses and respiratory therapists right so i i'm just going to make a decision you know like and be like case by case i'm not sure if i want to you know like be at risk going to the hospital for a couple of hours and just come home sick so i'm but, just but what remind me why you would go to the hospital i'm a medical interpreter ah that's right the interpreter yes 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 wait a minute you're the one we talk uh -huh. with in um in the wisconsin you the yeah you the only university of wisconsin hospital yes yes i remember okay <laughs> okay but this is this is good because maybe you could get some work right i remember yeah exactly but the question I, is do you want to put yourself in that position <laughs> you know it, it is very hard um okay. I, i have my 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 son 13 year old he is he has special needs yeah. and i i he will not handle well being sick yeah but i i know already like how to as you're saying decontaminate myself good. before coming home probably good. changing clothing good. before coming home Good. And but I'm a little concerned that I cannot use a mask. I would love to use a mask um in the hospital. Um it's a big it's, it's a it's a big issue. Hospitals it's... are at a very low point when it comes to masks. They don't have enough. They don't have enough masks. They're running out of gloves. They're running it. So I get it. Yeah. And mostly the N95 ones, those those are the ones that they don't have enough. Somebody is asking a good question. Can yes. you interpret via the phone? I can. Yes. And actually um I I have like I do that for insurance companies too. Okay. But the problem is in the hospital it's very difficult doing it on the phone because the, you know the you cannot hear the patient well yeah. and you know it, it is a you know it, it is hectic doing it like that. They offer that to to us but the problem is They have a company that do that for them. It's called Language Line and they do it like for 5 cents a minute. When I charge them $30 an hour. So they're if you know, if they're going to they're going to say, "Oh, if I'm going to use the phone, mm. I will use the phone that is going to charge me your 5 cents a minute." They're in the ground, you're worth it. Yeah. You, got, you know exactly. You can't expect people to pay you what you don't feel you're worth. So if you feel you're worth it, then you can set that expectation. Yeah, and and they know we we told them that you know the the service that we give give them is premium. We Absolutely. we are there and then we are reading nonverbal communication so I can tell if the patient is not understanding or sometimes the the patients are saying Oh, me duele aquí, it like hurts here, but they're right. not saying it hurts in my chest. Right. But because I'm there, right. I can say, you know, me duele el pecho, which is my, my chest hurts. You Got know, it. like, life interpreters, we do, we go, we go above and beyond. It's a what, specialty. It's a specialty. Yeah. 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 And I yeah. went to school for that, you know? Yes, you did. All right. Well, listen, I'm glad you checked back in. Have a wonderful night and good yeah. luck. You too. Um David and where's Jeremy? We don't know Jer anything about him. Jeremy is in Los Angeles. He is not working, so we're monitoring sort of his situation. He's staying at home and um but he's he's safe. We miss him, but he's safe. Oh. oh you know, know, say hi to him. You guys are beautiful. Well, thank you. And... Thank you for asking. Okay, and I'm super glad that I could just say hi again. Yo, me too. Have a good night. You too, honey. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Okay, let's see. Da, 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 da. Trying to get to as many people as possible. <laughs> David. Hi there. How are you? I'm good, sir. What is your name? Uh, my name is Victor. Victor, where are you in the world? I'm in Palm Springs, California. 
Oh, you're in Palm Springs. Palm Springs. I heard that they locked that place down. Yeah. We've been locked down since yesterday. And uh, yeah, nobody can go out. Kind of like, it's a tough situation. We already have three there. And because it's uh, 50 to 60% of the people who live here, they're, they're seniors. So it's a little bit hard situation. Victor, what do you do? What do you do for a living? I'm a personal trainer and massage therapy. Okay. So yeah. tell me about your new normal. Um, uh, new normal, I closed my gym. I have a gym facility here in Palm Spring. I've been doing personal training and, and therapy for 20 years. And um, I locked down my gym, my studio, on since Friday. So I got around 17 clients that I see. My oldest one, 87. Uh, the youngest one, 52. So I work in, you know, in a high risk population. So I decide to avoid that and, you know, shut down the, my, my studio and, you know, support this, <laughs> support the live here. So you're ideally in good health. I mean, you're a personal trainer. You take care of your own body. What are your, you're not in that age group bracket that we're most worried about, but what are you doing to make sure that you don't get it, even if you were to have mild symptoms, but to make sure you don't give it to somebody else. What are you doing? Um, usually, I don't go out. I, you know, it's, uh, I've been in the, inside the house for like three days. Okay. Um, avoid contact with everyone. So we, I live here with my partner. So he's 69 years old. Um, so he's, he's a high risk. I'm, um, I'm asthmatic since I was born. So I, I'm a cyclist too. I'm an athlete. And um, so I, my concern is like, I can get asthma, 30% of my lungs. If I get the, the, the virus, 30% of my lungs, they're going down. So usually my, my lungs are compromised already. Um, so that's my concern. Or, and, um, you know, take 14 days to, to know the virus is in. Then like, we don't know if we have it or we don't know who's have it. So we try to avoid to pass it in. So we've been here in, inside the house for three days. Does your partner have any underlying health conditions? Uh, 69 years old. So in that age bracket. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, and I'm, I'm really from Puerto Rico. I've been here for 10 years. Mm -hmm. I'm really from Utuado. Utuado. Um, yeah. So uh, you were the person who put me on my, you know, on the schedule with my family. It took me 25 days to hear from my family in Utuado. Wow. I'm on 125 without electricity, but that's another, that's, a, that's history. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the deal. How are your parents? They're okay? Uh, yeah, I still have my mom and my brother and sister. They're, they're still in, in the island. And they're in Utuado. Do you get back and forth? Uh, I was there after the hurricane. I went there. We bring some projects down there and, um, and came back last year too. Good, good. Yeah, good. I was going to in April now uh, because I work with a uh, special need population too. So I was going to Puerto Rico to uh, be part of a course that we're going to offer for people who live with Parkinson. Oh, that's wonderful. And you're, doing, because, you're doing a lot of good in the world, Victor. I try to. <laughs> yeah. So I, yeah, so today, and this is, uh, this is what we're doing here. I, I pair with another uh, friend of mine here, and we're doing, uh, we cut and we put in masks. We do like homemade masks to give out to the seniors population here. Um, oh, wow. Like face mask. So I, I never had the opportunity to sew it anything, but um, we put this from a friend from Puerto Rico, too, that um, they was doing the same. So we took the idea and um, because even the doctors, they have to recycle them, they have to clean them. So it's a little bit tough situation now. So we, we, we step on it. So I got around 80 of them here. And so you're making talking. them. Do me a favor. If someone happens to record a video of you guys doing it, send that to me. I'll share it. Okay. 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 I will. All right, Victor. Nice chatting with you. Thank you for everything. As always. You're welcome. Have a good Bye -bye. night. Bye-bye. That's really cool, making those masks. I like that. Uh, let's see. Victor's handle. Does it... Um, do I still have it here? Let's see. Somebody asked. Victor's handle. Uh, VT. VT dot T-O-R-T. VT dot tort t-o-r-t okay uh, da, 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 da. who's next who's next 
<clears throat> How is Paddington? Paddington's good. He uh he's literally sitting at my he's sleeping at my feet. I said his name and he raised his head. He's so cute when he sleeps. Sometimes I crawl on the floor and lay on the side of him. Hi, David. Hello, what's your name? Chrissia. Nice to meet you. Where are you? I'm in Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas. That's a great city. So what's your new normal? Um, I, I am laying down with my service dog right now. He's taking care of me. My, uh, I'm originally from Puerto Rico. My mom actually flew home today. My uh, grandma sadly passed at one in the morning. So today, uh, yeah, this morning, yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Um, where, where, where did that happen? Um, in Puerto Rico, she went uh, at seven p.m. She went to the hospital. Um, she couldn't feel her legs. Um, and wasn't a lot of pain, and my mom kind of knew, which was kind of strange. She said. You know, my uncle and her sister died from heart complications. I think my mom's going to pass, and she did. So I'm glad I was with my mom when we got the news I want in the morning. Oh. I was able to change her flight. JetBlue only took 30 minutes to answer the phone, which was surprising. So I'm glad I changed her flight because she would have been on a five-hour layover in Florida if I wouldn't have done that on her own, finding out by herself. So. I'm glad that I was with her. <laughs> oh, and you mentioned your service dog. What is your service dog for? Um, well, I have a, I'm a disabled veteran. I have fibromyalgia, endometriosis, a lot of things. I got lucky. Um, I had him since he was um, small, but um, when I was getting out of the military, I started noticing he was tasking naturally for me. He smells things in my body. Um, so sometimes he knows before I'm going to get really bad pain and stuff like that, or He'll do crying interruption, behavior interruption. Right now he's checking on me. <laughs> um, yeah, so I wow. found a trainer that could train, you know, those natural tasks and um, so that he could have the proper behavior to be in public um, and got a doctor, um, doctor letter and all that. So he's been my service dog since like 2015, since I got out of the army. So. Well, you have quite the story. <laughs> what is your new normal? My new normal, I'm one of those uh, lucky ones. I mean, it's not fun to be disabled, but I already had a special accommodation. He's still tasking because that was that. <laughs> um, um, I have a special accommodation to work from home, so I, I already luckily had the setup, um, a, a little office in my apartment to work from home. Um, so I had to see a lot of people at the office on Fridays. So I just kept sanitizing everything. Um, I work at the Board of Realtors here. And uh, so uh, as of Monday, I was told to start working from home. But today, obviously, I uh, took the day off to kind of mourn and just ground myself a little bit. Mm, I love the words that you use, ground myself a little bit. Meditation is really awesome. <laughs> it is amazing. It really helps. It is, am it is amazing. I could not agree with you more. I, yeah. wish, I wish I was more disciplined about meditating. Um, because it is just so good for me. It's, uh, you know, people love to journal. I love to meditate, you know, yeah. I, I love to meditate. Well, you have a very Zen spirit about you. So oh, thank you. Uh, thank you for sharing a little bit of your world with us. Thank you, David, and for everything you do for my island. <laughs> like everybody's been saying, I know it gives you energy and we really appreciate you. Well, I thank you. And again, my sincerest condolences. Thank you very much. All right. You have a good night. You too. Paddington, you want to come sit with daddy? He's like, no. I didn't think I was getting through. I'm like, oh, man, he, he um, accepted me. Well, surprise. What's your name? My name is Christina. Hello, Christina. Where are you in the world? Um, I'm in South Jersey. South Jersey. And tell me about your new normal. So my new normal actually just started, well, starts tomorrow. I work administration in a hospital. Okay. 
And um, because I'm not an essential employee, as far as hands-on with patients, I work in regulatory. So I will start working from home to kind of, um, I guess, have less bodies in the building. So that's kind of what we're working on to, you know, prevent so many people being around each other and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, I'm from New York City. I just recently got here last year. So it's a little scary because there's about 1,400 cases in New York alone. Um, we're here in New Jersey. We're probably about 300. Wow. Yeah. So a lot of proper hand hygiene, you know, um, something that we're facing in the hospital currently is that we have staff members that are overutilizing PPE and basically using it inappropriately, which actually causes more harm. What's, um, PPE? What's PPE? So personal protective wear. Oh, yeah. yeah so yeah. gowns, masks, um, booties, you know. Um, so it, it really should only be in, in scenarios where you absolutely need it so that when you do need the actual, you know, necessary equipment, it's available for those staff members and, and patient care. So how are y'all cracking down and, and sort of holding people accountable? So basically, um, re-education, you know, uh, stopping people in the hallways, just kind of, you know, letting them know that the best thing is keeping your, your social distance. That's something that we're really um, exercising, you know, throughout the whole organization. Cafeteria, you know, the shuttle buses for staff members coming to and from work. Yeah. Um, and basically a lot, of, a lot of talking and educating because, you know, people are afraid and, and they're worried. But um, the thing is, is that if you were to wear like gloves and touch, you know, um, surfaces and different places and then touch yourself, you're going to really self-contaminate as opposed to, you know, being mindful with hand hygiene and washing your hands properly. And um, just knowing what your surroundings are and the people that you're surrounding yourself with, you know, if they have the symptoms or and stuff like that. Look, if you can help re-educate and you can cut down the overconsumption by 25%, that would be drastic. Yes. I mean, yes. That, 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 would be, that would be drastic. So thank you. Thank you for sharing your story. And I'm, I'm sure glad I found you in the queue. Thank you. Have a wonderful night. You too. Thanks for everything you do. You bet. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Hi, David. Hello there. What's your name? Angel Anderson. Mr. Anderson, where are you in the world? I'm actually in Brooksville, Florida. In Florida. Okay. Tell me about your new normal. Well, first of all, before I tell you about the new normal, like a lot of people, thank you for everything that you have done. So since Maria and, and now for Puerto Rico, I'm from Cabo Rojo, uh, but now reside and live in Florida. So new norm. Um, I have a, a consulting business. As you know, a lot of uh, in most uh, towns, you do a lot of face-to-face -face networkings, uh, etc. Those things are gone right now. Kids are home. I have two boys. The kids are home. So uh, until April 15, actually. Um, so if things change, maybe homeschooling, that will change. Uh, but as of right now, it's not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. We're just staying here. We've been kind of slowly prepping. Uh, but uh, even in this side of the country in Brazil, which is not like Tampa, Orlando, you can't find nothing on the shelves. Nothing. No toilet paper, nothing, nothing, nothing. Really? No Walmart, no really? office people. So they're not restocking? I mean, it's not... It's restocking, but people are preparing or, or buying before we get to the stores, and uh, it, it's crazy. It's really crazy. Wow. Okay. Okay. Uh, that, that's interesting. I, I, <laughs> I have to be honest with you. I'm looking in my kitchen because I need some paper towels, and I, I need more toilet paper at some point, and I'm yeah. a little nervous because I went, I went last week, and they were like, no, we're out, and I hadn't been back. So you, the, the – We've been trying to order online. You know, you get creative. Like my wife will place an order. I might place another order because the the um, the quantities are limited. Right. But even even for even if you can buy one item, one one of each, 
Um, the orders online are being delayed. We were expecting some packages yesterday and today's Wednesday and we haven't arrived. But uh, going back to the norm, you know, besides the kids being here, all my meetings are being video calls today and yesterday. Uh, all no your face calls have been face meeting, all video calls. Video calls, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, I, I did a story today for CBS this morning and every interview I did was a Skype interview, you know? I mean, that's just, that is our new norm. That's our, that's, that's our new norm. Well, Angel, I'm glad you shared your story. Thank you for that. Um, anything else you want to say? No, sir. Thank you very much. And thank you again for everything you do for the island and uh, for bringing a voice to otherwise uh, unheard uh, people in the island. Thank you for everything you do over there. Thank I, you. Thank you. And I can't wait to visit Cabo Rojo. I've heard a lot of really good things about it. So I want yes, to sir. Good night, Angel. Good night. Hi, David. Hi. What is your name? Blessing from Puerto Rico. My name is Isai. It's Jesse in Spanish. Jesse in Spanish. Nice, yeah. to, nice to meet you. Where are you on the island? Okay, I'm in the west side uh, in a town called Mayagüez. Mayagüez, of course, yeah. I tell am me. In, in the other side of the island. Yeah, tell me about your new normal. Okay, I work for the Department of Education. Yes. I'm a teacher. Yes. And so we are struggling with... Uh, all the new stuff, of all the new way we have to work in a prehistoric system, we have to make uh, update it so quickly that make this work, you know. Uh, so we are, uh, the department are trying to create some kind of, of online classes, but we have to build the, the platform to deliver the all the classes, all the information, uh, create all that, and this is, you know, I don't know how to say, it, but it's insane. Well, you, you use the perfect word, prehistoric, right? You're taking a system, an education system, that is really outdated and antiquated, and needs to be updated and has been without resources for a long time. And now you're being asked to teach kids uh, from home. Oh, we lost him. There you are, there you are. I'm here. Okay, good. So, uh, no, I, I think you used the right word in, in prehistoric. Are you, are you able to use like Google Classroom and, and use that as a platform? Uh, I do by myself for my school, that's in, in school in my town. I make a fan page of Facebook like a year ago, a okay. year and a half ago. Uh, we built some uh, audience for the school that people like what we do. So that platform uh, for us, my school, not, not, not all the school, for my school, we use that platform to send every day in a post, this is what's going to happen, this is what you're going to do. I do by myself. The teachers, my uh, co-workers, send me the, the the information. So I upload it in a in a drive, and then post by classes that, that the students who the students who can have internet. Because right. Exactly. Some have, can. Right. Right. Yeah. Because we 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 live in a in, in our. Our schools are low-income schools. Yeah. So uh, we think that everybody has internet, and we think that, but that's not the truth. Yeah. So some 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 of them have uh, prepaid phones, or I don't know how called now, but Obama's phones that they do use for the inter have internet access to the internet. So we trying to do our best with the resources we have. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like it sounds like you are doing your best. What school do you teach at? What grade do you teach? Okay, I'm a I'm a the music teacher. Oh, so I'm the funniest teacher in, in the school. 
<laughs> at the coolest one. At the coolest one. Yeah, and we teach in school called Esteban Rosado Vice. Okay. Esteban Rosado Vice. Isn't all in the west side, in my west. Uh, and we have like almost 350, 400 students from kinder to eighth grade. So we have uh, from the very little to the eighth grade. So it's, it's a, a lot of information. We have we have a, a health class. We have a music class. We have a, a agriculture class. We have a physical education class and all the basic class. You know, it's a, it's a lot of uh, material that we have to bring it and not not only to bring it, it finds the word to this kind of kids that they have, uh, I won't say it, we have to explain them very, the most simple way you can to teach them. I don't know if I'm, I'm explaining. Uh, I understand you. To say. I, I understand you. You know, you have to explain so simple that yeah. they can understand, they can absorb that. So when you are in the class and you have to do in the classroom, how we can do that online. Mm, right, right. No, I get it. Your passion uh, comes through. I love it. Listen, people want to know what your Facebook page is because they want to donate to you. What is the Facebook page? Okay. Uh, we receive uh, no school any kind of donation, not money, right? Uh, but resources, uh, we can uh, accept them. Uh, everything is welcome. It's facebook.com slash Esteban Rosado Vice. I'm going to repeat it again. It's facebook.com slash Esteban Rosado Vice. You can find us there. Uh, so you can find you. You're gonna see a, a nice view. I, I, I post view with a drone. Uh, you can see, but we are very close to the to the beach. That's cool and that's dangerous. <laughs> yeah, and I want to give you guys his Instagram handle. It is I S A I Vargas. So I, I gotta... I S A I Vargas. Yes, Lisette right away. Right. Let me try to. Right here, the Facebook page of the school. Oh, I think somebody uh, just. Yes. I think somebody just did. Yeah. Yeah, that's Esteban the right Rosado one. Vice. Esteban Rosado Vice. You can find. I write it there. Great, great. Hey, listen. I uh, I'm glad you joined us tonight. Thanks for sharing your story. Thank you very much. I appreciate. Uh, in name of Open Rican, I know you hear this so much, but we appreciate how you uh, picture us in the USA during the hard times. So as a teacher, I appreciate all you've done, all my, my, my prayers and my thanks and my blessings here from the West. I hope you can be here in the West sometime and have some nice coffee. I will do that. I give you my word. I thank you. You seem like a great teacher. God thank bless you. Thank you very you. much. God bless you. It. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Thank you. Oh, there's so many wonderful people telling you. So many terrific people, right? This is, isn't this just awesome? It's just so great to randomly just drop in on people that are like fantastic. It's fantastic. Oh my Lord, there's so many of you guys. I'm trying to get to as many as I can. I think we have about 16 minutes left, 15 minutes left. Let me see how many I can get through. Okay, they might not be ready. Oh, come on, button. Oh, Lord, don't give me that thing again. Oh, friends, our button ain't working. Bad news, our button ain't working. 
turn my camera around. Hmm. Uh oh. Bad news bears. So my button that I got to click to bring people in is not working. That might be the universe's way of telling me it's time to it's time to call it a day. Oh wait, I can answer some questions. Okay, wait a minute. Do you have any okay, why don't we do some of this? Do you have any information about getting the new Lazaro? I don't know that I understand that. Okay, so do you have any information about getting the new news, getting coronavirus and getting very ill? I'm not quite sure I understand that. Um, we in Cleveland have a great story to tell, okay. Do you think POTUS should also implement a lockdown as Governor Wanda Vasquez has done? Um, they're apparently not considering a nationwide curfew. They are leaving that up to the governors of each state to do. Uh, David, I'm in Southwest Michigan. My university is going through tough times. I'd like to share. I'd like to get you in to share, but the problem is my button ain't working. I am hitting my button and it just ain't working. It ain't working, y'all. Okay, so... Um, all right, so here's here's what I'll do. I'll end this one and I'll start right back up. Okay, we'll 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 do a half hour. So I'll end this one. The, the damn button ain't working. So let's end this one. Then I'll come. Or wait a minute. What if I click here? Forty three people want to be in your video. When I click view, yeah, ain't working. All right, so I'm gonna come down and come right back up. We're back. We are back. The button that I use, the little button that I got to press to bring you guys in uh, was not working. So, all right, here we go. This person's name is Beautiful Disaster. That's their handle. Beautiful Disaster. Hi. Hi, David. Hi. What's your name? Where are you? My name is Erica. I'm in Oceanside, California. Great. Tell me your story, your new normal. So I'm a pharmacist. Okay. We're still out there. I work for a big chain. Okay. Um, so I've been pulling a lot of hours this week. Yeah. Um, been really tired. A lot of people coming in. Um, I think we have this kind of panic mentality right now, which I want everyone to know you don't have to panic. Um, definitely want everyone to get their normal meds. Uh, we're probably seeing a bit of a shortage soon on things like inhalers. So I want to just let all my asthmatic patients know, make sure you have your meds on standby. This is definitely a respiratory thing that we have. Sorry, my kiddos in the background. They're calling no, 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 it's fine, <laughs> fine. That's really good. Nobody said that before, like inhalers. That's true. Make sure you've got that. Um, so we just want to make sure everyone has what they need. You don't need to stockpile or request six months supply on anything. Um, you just need your normal meds. Yep. Um, patients who are immunocompromised, we're really concerned about them. So we have a triage set up in the pharmacy now. Okay. So anyone who's on steroid therapy, anyone who's a cancer patient, they're getting prompt service. We're getting them in and out. Good. Um, I do ask for everyone to be patient um, because pharmacies are packed right now. We're so busy. We're trying yeah. to help everyone. Yeah. So if it's something that it can wait or if you can pick it up the next day, it's definitely the best course of action. Um, and just be patient with us. You know, we're dealing with a lot right now. We want to help everyone. We're doing our best. This is good. This is really good stuff. I'm glad you joined. And please do what you can to protect yourself. You got a lot of sick people coming to see you. I mean, that's what we're worried about, too. Yeah. We're concerned about the asymptomatic patients. Right, um, right. So we're trying to keep distance. But we all know in, in pharmacies, there's no real space. There's no barrier between us. Yeah. So yeah. we're gloving up. Um, there's no recommendations for us to wear masks. And we prefer to leave the masks for people who really do need them. Um, yeah on the hospital end of it. So we're doing what, I, what we can, washing hands a bunch of times, gloves. 
Oh, if someone's saying they can send me a mask, thank well, you. <laughs> well, no, you know who it is. It's Victor. We just interviewed him in Palm Springs, this guy who's a personal trainer, and he and his friend are making these masks, and it's in the it's in the last video. Oh, that, but, oh, yeah. yeah. So I'll take one of those. That would be great. <laughs> yeah, it's really, really, I mean, listen, in in a normal world, we, we might laugh at that mask and be like, come on, that ain't a mask. You need an N95 mask. But we're living in a different time yeah. where you can't get that. And so people are improvising and they're, doing, they're, they're trying to use something that works. So uh, this was good. I thank you for getting on and um, have a wonderful night. Thanks you as well. Everyone stay healthy. You too. Bye. Okay. Hi, buddy. Paddington, I know you want to come snuggle with me. No? Mm. Mm, looks like that person walked away from the phone. All right, so try this gentleman. Yeah, she was good, right? Good to hear from pharmacists. Good perspective. Hey. Hi. What's your name? My name is Ivan. I'm from Guaynabo, Puerto Rico. Guaynabo. Tell me what your new normal is, Ivan. Well, honestly, my new normal are things that I haven't done in a really long time. Like? Like writing and dancing on my own. Wait, this is good. This is good. You said like... Like writing and yeah. dancing on my own. Yeah. Oh, I love like that. it's been a while since. I, yeah, it's been a while since I've been at home and just put music and being able to use that as a workout. First off, as a to express myself and writing is something that it's been. I remember when I finished my first um, story that I spent two weeks on it. I felt so proud of it. It was in college, uh, third year. And I've started a lot of things after that. And it feels like I'm going back to feeling that happiness of finishing something that took me a while that I really wanted to express. This is so good. So basically, the requirement to be indoors is forcing you to do some introspection and reflection in your writing and your dancing, right? I think so, yes. It's just going to your room. It's you like taking, taking away all those distractions that they make us go day by day. It'll help you remember the, what you liked and what you were. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, that sounds so simple, but it also sounds very profound. Like, I love that. I love that. Yeah, so that's basically the new normal, just finding new ways of finding yourself. That's awesome, man. And I love the coquette behind you. Oh, thank you. That My mom made that. Oh, I like that too, but I was talking about the coquette. Ah, yes. I just moved here three weeks ago, one month, one month ago. So it's, I've been in an apartment for the last six years, so this is something refreshing also. Awesome. I don't think I, I'd like to be in an apartment and start for two weeks. Yeah, tell me about it. Uh, listen, nice hearing from you. Thank you, David. It's been, uh, I'm surprised. I was, I was shocked when you uh, made me share. So thank you for that. You're more than welcome. Have a wonderful night and good luck finding yourself. Thank you. And to everyone else, try to find yourself. What else can Amen. I? Amen. Amen. You have a good night. Enjoy. I love that. I love that. Try to find yourself. Oh, no, please don't tell me that button ain't going to work. Ay, ay, ay. I think the app is probably done with me. The app is like, listen, man, you have done five hours today and it's not working. So my friends at 1110 Eastern time, I will bid you farewell. Um, I thank you for what has been a wonderful day of listening and talking and sharing and smiling and tearing up over the stories that 
um, matter. And, uh, you know, a again, the reason for doing this is very clear. I'd like to have a community where people can come together to share if they feel comfortable or listen if they don't. And so thank you all for being here. This is, I, th I, think, I think we're doing something important. You've heard me say, if you follow me, and it, Oprah said this, this is not me saying this, but all people want to know is, do you hear me? And does what I have to say matter? Then that's what I think this is about. We hear you and what you're saying matters. It does. So we'll do it again tomorrow. I'll see you then. Good night.